Hi, we're the Burkhalters. I'm Rachel. And I'm Susan, and Ted says hi also. Uh, we welcome you to St. Andrews, uh, from St. Andrews this morning. We're at Outdoor Church and are happy to see part of our church family here. And we look forward to seeing everybody in church again. Hi, we're the Jones family. I'm Brian. And I'm Jeannie. Welcome to St. Andrews. We enjoyed our first outdoor service last Sunday in the church parking lot where we saw so many of our fellow parishioners that we hadn't seen in a long time. It was great. We do miss our worship services in the nave, but we're so appreciative of all the work that goes into the various services here. We're glad you're with us today. Have a great week. Hello, St. Andrew's friends. Welcome to worship. We're glad you're here. Some announcements before we start the service. Adult Forum will be held after the coffee hour, 11.30 a.m. on Zoom. The link is in Friday's Parish Update. And we're going to talk about regathering and go over the survey results. Uh, Reverend Packard will lead this. Adult Formation will take place every other Sunday, trading off with Sunday School. Any questions, contact Formation at standandrews.net. Sunday School Registration. Sunday School Classes will meet every other week. Adult Forum. Then the next week will be Sunday school, then a back to adult forum, and so on. You get the idea. The next Sunday school will be on October 18th. Classes are grouped into pre-K through 12th, 3rd through 5th, 6th through 8th, and 9th through 12th grades. They'll meet outside from 11 to 11.30 while the weather is good. You need to register your, uh, your youth. Link on the screen. And finally, contact formation if you have any questions. Youth confirmation class. This is the 9th through 12th grade Sunday school curriculum and it meets from 11 to 11.45 a.m. every other Sunday starting October 18th. For students who are looking to be confirmed, have already been confirmed or have no intent on being confirmed but want to participate anyway, the registration is on the website and in the October net. Contact formation if you have any questions. Finally, ECHO food donations. We're looking to keep the ECHO uh, food pantry supplied more consistently. Please bring non-perishable items to donate to our outdoor services 10 a.m. Sundays. Drop-off box will be at the check-in table, regardless of whether you're attending the service or not. And if you have any questions, contact outreach at standandrews.net. Hey, have a great week, everybody, and thanks for listening. Enjoy the service. Hello, St. Andrews. Welcome to your worship this morning and the opportunity to worship here online with you and at the recording of this, we do not yet know whether or not we will have outdoor worship. Um, so if we are indoors entirely, I welcome you back to our online worship this morning. Uh, thank you for all of the announcements. And we do have our monthly net coming back, and it will replace the weekly one this week. And there is a lot going on. I kept seeing more and more things which we could add to it. I will call your attention and do take a look at the formation opportunities that are there uh, for adults today. We're going to look and answer questions about the road to regathering, about all of the diocesan and state requirements, where we are in the process and what we're thinking and uh, what our survey has already indicated. And I look forward to that. And we have a couple other adult forums already on the schedule coming up in the future. And before we get going, I want to speak to those youngest ones in our midst, which perhaps could be all of us at heart. And I want to talk about a golden calf. That's right, a golden calf. But first, what is at the middle of your dining room table? Is there anything at the middle? Sometimes we have flowers. Sometimes we have napkins and things at the middle. What is at the middle of your table right now? Take, if you're close to it, take a look and tell me what you see. Do you see anything? Sometimes the flowers are too big so you can't see the, uh, the person on the other side of the table. Sometimes it's something handy, the salt and the pepper in the middle of the table. Perhaps, but it's something that we need or that adds uh, ambiance, that adds decoration to the middle of the table, and something that we need and we can look at. 
And the important thing, too, is everybody that's sitting around the table. Okay, now listen to the Old Testament story that we're about to hear in a few minutes. Moses' people were waiting for Moses to get back. Moses went to the top of the mountain to go get the Ten Commandments. These are stone tablets. The iPads come later. Stone tablets that Moses brought back down to the people. But while they were waiting, they got tired. And they thought, well, maybe God doesn't really, maybe God isn't around. So they got all the gold they could find from their jewelry, and they melted it, and they made a small calf. It looks like a cow. And they began worshiping this gold statue. And they put that in the middle of them. And that's what they paid attention to and worshiped. And they, they forgot that it's God that helped them come to where they are, that freed them, that saved them. And they had this golden calf that didn't have God in it. And that was their fault and their mistake. But God forgave them when Moses came back down. And they all remembered that it was God that was always with them the entire time. So think about what's at the middle of your table. Don't worry, it's not what you're worshiping. I'm not saying you're worshiping the flowers or the butter at the middle of the table. But I want you to imagine at the middle of every table you are sitting in, the middle of every room, God is right there, right in the middle, with you, always. And you can always talk to God, and God will always listen. And God answers all of our prayers whenever we ask, but just not always the way we want God to answer them. But God does want you to talk to him, to God. And it's at the middle of every room, of every place we go. Amen. And now, wherever you are, whenever you're watching and worshiping, know that we worship together, one together.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your grace may always precede and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now let us continue with our readings. A reading from the book of Exodus. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered around Aaron and said to him, come make gods for us who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up from the land of Egypt, we did not know what became of him. Aaron said to them, Take off the gold rings that are on the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off their gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from them, formed it in a mold, and cast an image of a calf. And they said, These are our gods, O Israel, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be the festival of the Lord. They rose early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought sacrifices of well-being, and the people sat down to, to eat and drink 
and rose up to rebel. The Lord said to Moses, go down at once. Your people whom you brought up from the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast themselves an image of a calf and have worshiped it and sacrificed to it. And they and said, these are our gods, O Israel, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this, I've seen this people, how stiff necked they are. Now let me alone so that my wrath may burn hot against them and I may consume them. And of you, I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath Change your mind and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them on your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven. And all this land that I have promised, I will give to your descendants and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he had planned to bring on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalms 106, verses 1 through 6, and then 19 through 23. Alleluia. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Who can declare the mighty acts of the Lord or show forth all his praise? Happy are those who act with justice and always do what is right. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor you have for your people and visit me with your saving help, that I may see the prosperity of your elect and be glad with the gladness of your people, that I may be that I may glory with your inheritance. We have sinned as our forebears did. We have done wrong and dealt wickedly. Israel made a bull calf at Horeb and worshiped a molten image. And so they exchanged their glory for the image of, a, of an ox that feeds on grass. They forgot God, their savior, who had done great things in Egypt wonderful deeds in the land of Ham, and fearful things at the Red Sea. So he would have destroyed them had not Moses, his chosen, stood before him in the breach to turn away his wrath from consuming them. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. My brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, Stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Euodia and I urge Sintichi to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplications with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable. 
If there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves mistreated them and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, 
Bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Has anyone ever had those difficult questions asked of us by our own children or perhaps the very young? They seem to ask the right ones. How many of you have been asked, what is heaven like or what is hell like? And you start answering the question and realize there's a lot to think about and try to explain and a lot that's not directly given to us. I love a a little parable I've heard called the parable of the spoons. When someone was actually able to ask God what heaven was like and what hell was like. And they met in a hallway and the man asked God, so what is it like? And they went into the room over on the left. And in there it smelled delicious. The room had an incredible odor because the stew in the middle of the table was so savory and delicious and filling. And around the outside of the table were people sitting and the stew was for them to partake. Yet, everyone sitting at that table looked very hungry and even sickly looking. And the man looked at them and couldn't figure out why they were not eating the stew and it They had spoons that were longer than their arms, and they could not get the spoons to their mouths to enjoy the stew. And the man was saddened, and they left that room. And then God showed them, showed the man the other room. He walked in, and the same wonderful smell came out, and the man's mouth was watering could see the steam coming up from the soup in the middle of the table, the large table, and everyone sitting around the table didn't look like the other room. They were happy. They were laughing and talking, and they had eaten plenty and tons of this never-ending stew. The man looked to see if they had spoons that were more suitable for eating the stew, but no, they were the exact, exact same spoons. But what was happening was they were feeding each other, serving each other the savory stew. The first group could not figure out in their own desires, their own needs for self, how to partake of the bounteous gift of God's mercy and of God's love that we find in that stew. Our Old Testament lesson is an old one that we know so well. And if you know Mel Brooks coming down from the mountains who brings the 15 commandments and then drops the tablet and says, no, 10 commandments. But they go and God tells Moses that the people have already gone astray and Moses has been gone a long time. And sure enough, they are using the only gold they had left from the earrings and they made an image of a calf in which they might worship God. And of course, this breaks the commandments. They have put something ahead of God and thought to keep God and make God for whom they thought God was, the one that brought them out of bondage. They were led astray seemingly so easily. And we think to identify ourselves with those who cannot go astray. If we look at our baptismal covenant, though, it does say whenever we fall into sin. Not if we do, but when. God knows, and it's the history of the Old Testament and of our new where people will fall away. And it's that the invitation to come back is always there. The invitation to return. And notice that God changes God's mind in this story. 
And we have Moses, our intercessor here. This can point to power of prayer. But God working with us, listening to us. And when we lose sight of where God is in our lives, seeking our own will instead of God's, we might become like those who sit on the outer skirts and are unable to partake of the love that God has given us. In serving others, we too are served and filled and satiated with the gift of God's love. Since coming here at St. Andrew's, I have been amazed by everything going on. I have been amazed by our outreach programs supporting such ministries as ECHO, FACETS, Samaritan Ministry of Greater Washington, and so many more opportunities. I've seen us serving each other. We are reaching out now and we are more separated. And I know that not everybody perhaps feels as connected because of the pandemic especially, and we are not perfect. But the fellowship and the love that I feel here bound, that is bounding, binding us together in God's love is so strong. And look at everything going on in a pandemic. Four regular weekly services to worship God right now. And look at this quality in which we are able to worship while not actually sitting in this space. And thanks to the ministry, we have equipment here ready to go, especially when we are able to come back, but not everybody is able to come. We have cleaning supplies purchased, things that we don't normally budget for. And as we're looking at our upcoming budget, looking at how we might continue to staff our parish so as to serve the needs and follow the mission that we have. I have seen countless hours of faithless feeding stewardship of our vestry members, of our staff, and so many people that, uh, that prefer, I think, to remain anonymous too, but I have seen around our campus especially the behind the scenes. So many people and so much going on. And I am so grateful to the stewardship of time, talent, and treasure that is abundant and here. And I especially am grateful to our stewardship team this year that is bringing us. And as we say at the beginning of every worship service, no matter where we are, we worship one together. And I do encourage you this year as our stewardship team reaches out and communicates this message to us that we give of ourselves and of so doing, we recognize that it is of God's that we give and in fact are able to feed others as those around the table experience the fullness of God's love. Our gospel passage this week tends to send some preachers and some of us running. I know our nine o'clock Bible study crew will actually have a lot of, uh, I will say fun, but will dive into it thoroughly. It is a difficult passage to look at, especially in God's actions. And what is with the one who arrived without the wedding banquet garments? What do we make of that person? I like a particular reading of that instance as the person who came speaking and proclaiming faith, but not actually living into it. Someone who is not showing the fruits of somebody who has accepted God's love. When we partake of that wonderful stew, we cannot help but show it outwardly in our actions, in our minds, and in the way we live and move. As a beloved priest I once knew, Father Emmanuel Johnson once used to say, if you are a pineapple, show me your juice. So is when we have faith, when we believe in the love and mercy given to us, when we believe in the promise given to us in those commandments, the promise given to us, the, the joy with which Paul writes from prison in his letter to the Philippians, our lives, our ministries show it. And especially as we go into this stewardship season, 
it is seen, and it is our opportunity to give of what God has so graciously given us in all three time, talent, and treasure. Now that pot of stew in the middle of the table, it is more than delicious, savory, something that feeds us for a temporary time. It is something that sustains us beyond this life. It is a taste of heaven. And in that image that we have just said in this parable that is of heaven, we can partake of pieces of that feast here and now, and we can show others what it tastes like and what it is like to know of God's abounding grace and mercy, the same God that changed God's mind and favored those who had turned away is the same one who, when we come and return again and again, accepts, accepts us, accepts us with the never-ending mercy of the arms of the one whose, whose arms were stretched out on the cross for all of us. As we go forward on this day, I want to extend so many thanks to all of you for the wonderful ministry, the feeding that we have given in this community and look to where we might see additional opportunities for those who are not fed and those who do not even know that they are invited to the table and to go out into the towns and invite them into the towns, into Burke, into wherever, invite our friends. And I look forward to being part of this that is our mission. We are already doing it. And there's much more to do in the call of the kingdom. And in so doing, we are partaking of that feast and experiencing God's love. Amen. Let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. We pray for teachers and students, especially as they begin this school year. We pray for guidance in our work, for those who are furloughed, for those who do not have employment and seek it, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. We ask for guidance as we seek racial reconciliation. We pray for the upcoming election, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. We pray for those who are victims of and who fight the forest fires in our nation. We pray for all frontline workers, especially those tending to the sick. We ask for guidance in the pandemic, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. 
for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of the Province of Uganda. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Hanover with Brunswick Parishes, King George, for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Susan, Jennifer, and Porter, our bishops, and all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in his church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We pray in particular for Michael, Lauren, Max, John, Janet, Carol, Chris, John, Larry, Dale, John, Phil, George, Ed, Agnes, David, Lori, Bill, Susan, Linda, Ed, Jack, Nancy, Dale, Ryan, Gunner, Heike, Regina, Conrad and family, David, James, Leanne, Pam, Philippa, Marie, Terry, Lloyd, John, Maureen, Douglas, Susan, and Beth. Please feel free to say prayers for people out loud or in the silence of your hearts, wherever you are. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. You may say names now of people who have died out loud or in the silence of your hearts, wherever you are. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now, my brothers and sisters, wherever you are, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And God's people say, and also with you. Okay, send out those text messages. Wish peace to everybody in the room. Uh, even if they perhaps don't want to, you can give them the sign of the peace. You can color a peace sign if you happen to have coloring uh, ready for you. And... Uh, feel free to send out a text message to perhaps somebody that might not even be worshiping with us this morning or whenever you're worshiping. And know that in so doing, we're recognizing the peace that is of Christ in all of us. And now let us have the offertory. We see so much offering of ourselves and in our stewardship, we are looking and asking and seeing the, the offering that we have that God has already given us, that we might hand over to God in thanksgiving. And to now walk in love as Christ loved us, who gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
We were all young once. It's an amazing time in life, one that should be bottled and sold in stores. The world holds wonder, possibilities, a vast array of avenues for the future, and most of all, promise. In my very humble opinion, that is a large portion of what God and Jesus give us in humanity, promise. And in promise, there is always hope. So why do I talk to you today? Well, my point is simple. Most of us don't regularly venture to the, quote, back of house, end quote. That's where our nursery, our preschoolers, our Sunday schoolers, and our middle and high schoolers learn and explore the word of our Lord. Our youth are of the utmost importance in a house of God, one that we share one together. So the most of us, the least of us, and the rest of us all need tending to in body, nature, and spirit. Therefore, our call as Christians is to treat the education of our youth as front of house. They are essential and intricate to the success of our house. Our youth all grow into maturity and eventually join us as adults in the greater Christian community, whether here at St. Andrews or abroad, wherever they may plant their roots. And I would say all in all that we have always made this of great importance here at St. Andrews and must into the future. But what does that really mean? Well, from a stewardship sense, we need a place to educate our youth. Check. At least half of our physical plan is used for Christian education from kindergarten through 12th grade. Our physical plant is aging, but Doug Wood, our junior warden, and Christine Kelly, building and grounds, and all in the similar capacity for nearly 50 years have kept this place running. This area could use a little boost in pledges to really solidify the physical plant into the future, but it is being taken care of, and we are good stewards. We always need teachers. We have plenty of them, but we could always use more. Check. Many hands make light work, so if um, you're inclined, see either of our formation co-chairs, Stacy Peters and Jane Gerondo, so we can have a full teaching staff when we're all back together and healthy. We need resources, mostly check. Our budget for formation continues to be an issue, but uh, we're working on that as a vestry, and it's made up for by the creative use of resources and non-pledged supplements of our youth education budget, and finally, the tailoring of the programs to fit the budget we have. But imagine a world where formation is fully funded and we could bring in the best and brightest Christian educators, authors, speakers, and the like to work with our youth. Imagine being able to take all of our youth on field trips or to work camp and pilgrimage without worry of cost. We need assistance for our priest in charge, half check, and we're working on it as a vestry. Affording an assistant or associate rector to assist our priest in charge, Reverend Packard, is a must and something you de detail pretty clearly in the survey that we recently did. We're actively working as a vestry in a very demanding time financially to make this happen and it is a priority for some very obvious reasons that I give you in this presentation. And because Reverend Packard simply can't be everywhere all the time. We need our youth to participate. Well, half check. All of the above are important, but a sense of belonging and a willingness to participate comes from a variety of places. Our parents and teachers do a terrific job, and our youth crave our overall encouragement, and particularly those in middle and high school. The opportunities are here to get to know our Christian youth and guide them in the faith, and I hope we'll take full advantage of them. Youth are amazing and more mature than you might think and have thoughts and opinions that open my world up, because you see when the pandemic will let me, I will continue as a track coach at West Springfield High School with around 200 athletes on the team. Our soon to be adults and the ones that will succeed them thrive on you wanting to get to know them. They wanna be counted, they wanna participate, they wanna be noticed. So let's get them there with encouragement and thoughtful engagement. And as soon as the pandemic lets us, they're encouraged to join us again as lectors, greeters, acolytes, choir, helpers and assistants in the Sunday school the audiovisual team, youth representative to our vestry, and so much more. So we should all go to Sunday school, which is a great idea. And we adults know this as adult ed and teaching Sunday school. And by the way, this is a shameless plug for Reverend Packard's adult ed uh, on Sunday. It depends on when you're watching this. Um, but you might find out something new and interesting about us, make some lifelong friends and build a foundation that's good and uh, in good and bad times and will be a bedrock throughout our lives. The last thing I'll leave you with is this. I have two daughters, me and Debbie, 
they were a part of our Sunday school here at St. Andrews with a few friends who also came through our full formation program from K to 12 and went to preschool at St. Andrews. They're 27 and they're 24 years old now and are still very much in touch with and do much together with these same friends. It warms me every time I see Kate, Jackie, Lisa, Amanda, and Anna in photos together or, or know that they're doing things together. And that's how it can be. They have all remained one together and that is how it can be for us all. And if you have not yet seen it, I do call you to the giving tab on our website, which has uh, the many ways and opportunities in which we encourage and teach stewardship in the midst of our congregation. And now let's say those words that our Lord Christ taught us to pray. And the words that are in the bulletin that was sent out and that is on page 364 of your Book of Common Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of the Son, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. And now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. And God's people say, thanks be to God. Alleluia.